Hey, how's it going? It's Ollie here. So, very warm welcome to this interview with Mike O'Connor. So, Mike started working with me, I think it was back uh, two years ago now, I believe, um, was when we worked together, or started working together. And um, you may have seen our interview that we did uh, last year, but Mike's made even more progress. So, what I wanted to do was have a catch up and really dive a bit deeper into Mike's story so you can learn from his journey because it's really, really inspirational. So, Mike, it's a pleasure to have you here with me today. Uh, how are you doing today, man? Ah, cool, thanks. Yes, yeah, going really well. So, awesome. awesome. Yes. Love it. So, I think a great place to start, Mike, would be um, with your background. And I'd love to dive a little bit deep into... Um, what you were doing before we started to work together, before the Amazon business started to take off. And I'd love for you to just paint a picture of how things were um, before we met and before we, we started working together. Yeah, sure. So it's uh, quite interesting. So my, where I was at the time, I was working in the West Midlands. i have just been divorced for about a year. I was in a bed sit. I was working for a public health company. Um, and it was really quite dead end and it was like I wanted to pull myself out of where I was and I came across a, this Amazon opportunity and I thought I could combine it with my project management skills and, and, and try and look at it. So that's what I did. So I did what a lot of people do. I scouted around and I found a course and this particular course, um, the way it worked was you got um, a folder with some DVDs in and you watch the DVDs. And that was kind of it. They kind of did a question session, but unless you knew what you were doing uh, or knew to ask the question, you were kind of sort of floundering in the dark a bit. So it was quite a dry course. But from that, I, I got brave. Uh, and I know a lot of people think, oh, that first contact's really hard. And I'm like a number of people, I actually wrote a script. So when I picked that phone up, I was almost reading verbatim from the script saying, I'd like to order 200. Is that OK? And, and <laughs> the person was really good. They kind of knew where I was coming from. And I ordered a product that I put into Amazon.com. Uh, and it was great. I worked with a graphics up, uh, designer off Upworks. And it was really nice because you kind of then got the opportunity to put some of your personality into a product. And that particular product, it did okay. Um, but what happened was the pay-per-click was getting more and more expensive as the market was getting more and more complicated and over. But, and also, I just didn't have that depth of knowledge. I didn't have anyone to ask or bounce back off. So I kind of pulled out of that and got a little bit despondent. But I thought, you know, there's something in this. And then another opportunity came up. And in fact, it's one that Ollie's used as examples when you're trying to start again. And that was a retail arbitrage. And that was different because I decided to do that in the UK. I mean, I had more control, I could decide what went in, when it went in. And with a little bit of software, it, it became um, possible. And that Christmas, um, very weird, sort of running into a shop, buying three or something, going out the shop, coming back in again, buying another three. But yes, I did really well. I think I made probably 6,000 over that quarter. So that then gave me a budget. And it was then, I was like, I really want to go back to this private label because that's what I want to do. You know, I want to do my own business. I want to be something I'm proud of and just not another cog in the world. In the world. And that's when I came across Ollie, and Ollie's first presentation was about retail arbitrage. So, oh, I get this, I know where he's going with this. And they talked about um, a bit about private label and talked about mentorship. And now, that was that when I looked back, that's what was missing. I didn't have that, I had an okay idea, but I didn't have a clear idea. So, you have an okay idea, and the manual doesn't tell you if you're going off track from that okay idea, but if you're talking to someone, they go, well, what are you thinking? Why are you doing this? And they go, well, have you thought about this? So that was a, um, a really good um, starting point. So, yeah, that's kind of how I started. Love it. So you started off in America. You started off with, was it 200, you said, in the first order you placed? And this was following like a video 
or like a DVD home study course package thing. So you had all the all the stuff, all the information, but you didn't have someone to speak with if anything went wrong, things like that. Um, and it just started. So it, it started off well, and it started to dwindle down. Is that is that what happened? You know, you sent in a few that were selling, but it wasn't profitable. Yeah. So what happened was it was a a time when you could quote unquote pay for reviews. They then mm. got rid of all that. More people came to the market. Paperclip just got uh, too expensive, and so it just wasn't feasible. So learned loads from it, but it wasn't it wasn't right for me. And it just just I knew that I knew it was there. I just needed some more help. Got you. So then you went to retail arbitrage. Went around the shops in the UK selling on Amazon UK, buying cheap products from shelves and flipping them um, uh, and selling them for more. And then you got motivated to try private labels in the UK and then you found me. And so um, we started working together, right? And I can't remember which, was it 2017 that we started? Yes, it would have been 2017 because I had a look back at my retail arbitrage and that was sort of, that was 2016. So yeah, it was 2017 we started. I remember. So wow, that's... Uh... It's three years almost, two and a half years. Wow, it's flown by, man. It's just unbelievable. Um, so let's fast forward to today then. So you started working with me. I remember we launched a couple of test products and you had a few things in the pipeline. Um, and um, fast forward to today, obviously, things are going well. So yeah, paint us a picture of how things are now once we started working together and, and everything that's happened since. So where I am now is... I'm mainly based in the UK, but I'm about to go back to Amazon.com um, because I know enough now. I know the particular product I have in the UK. I know there's a niche in the USA where it's not going to be over competitive. And yes, it's, it's amazing. It's like if you said to me uh, right at the beginning, right, Mike, you're going to do a test product with £5,000, I'll have coughed very loudly um, you you know you when you first start you're looking at 500 pound or 500 US dollars but when you get into this part of business now I'm a uh, now six figure seller um, when you're trying to expand what you're working on your budgets and your expectations go higher mm. um, so yeah so it's a big transformation so now you're placing orders 5,000 pounds and you know it's it's not like the end of the world you feel like it's a safe investment you know that you're going to get money back on that investment and uh, you know you feel confident enough to do that so um let's get i really want to get clear on your numbers all right so you mentioned there just casually that you're a six-figure seller which is incredible so what does that mean in terms of revenue then so my turnover uh, my goal was to well my goal was actually it's very close my goal for the this year, so I run April to April. I'm a limited company. I have an accountant that works for me. Great. My goal was 150,000, and I think I'm going to be at about 147,000. So I'm not complaining. So we're pretty close there. That's incredible. So around 150,000 pounds in annual turnover. And how many how many products are you selling at the moment then? I'm going to get back to three core products but i probably have six products so which I, I want to elaborate a little bit more on so like people who first start this it's i had my first product was a great product it sold well and then things changed my next two products weren't so good and then my fourth and fifth were better and it was really about when you're starting early when you have that first product that just doesn't do what you expect it to do, you get really um, down in the mouth and downhearted about it. But all I want to say is without failure, you can't learn from it. So I, I, I imported a product. Uh, um, it was good price margins. Well, what I didn't take into account was it actually turned out to be more fragile than I expected. So I ended up with a high percentage of returns. So mm. my lesson from that was as part of my inspection, I now do drop tests on any new product. So, so any failure you get, you, you kind of come up with your new rules, I must check for this, I must check for that. So yeah, so that's kind of what you get when you get to this level. You now, I guess the best way I could, I now have a baseline of three products which are generating me money. 
and from that I can then expand my risk so I can go for either another safe product or I can go one I think it's worth I think this market's going to grow so I can go for this product because I have a baseline product already generating me money that's amazing and it's, it's pretty um it's pretty outstanding that you only have three core products and that's bringing in the majority of your revenue um, that, that's incredible so what would you say is your average profit per product then for those three core products oh <laughs> so they do vary so uh, so I've got a product I sell for 15 pound and I make five pound profit and I am VAT oh. registered mm -hmm. so that's a really good thing? product mm -hmm. next one uh, sells for about £14 and I make about £3.50 profit mm -hmm. but that's because I want to I overstocked that product and I want to reduce my stock levels because then it frees up capital for another product mm -hmm. my third one sells for about £20 and I make about £5 profit from it. Wow so aside from the VAT you're looking at maybe 20-30% profits somewhere around that it's pretty um, in line with what we aim for, so it seems like you're doing things um, uh, really well and, and really by the book, which is which is so cool. So it's really interesting, a few of the things that you mentioned, um, which are just so uh, key, like I love your attitude, you know, you launch one product and most people just want to launch one product, they want it to go perfectly um, and they expect everything to go perfectly uh, and if it doesn't, then sometimes they just give up. But I mean, you didn't. You stayed in the game and you've learned the lessons from that first product and almost built up a bank of knowledge and experience that you've brought with you to your next products as you've continued to launch them. And now, you know, because you've got all that, you've got a much higher chance of products succeeding, which is what we're aiming for. That's all you want. You want to become like a product launching machine where the chance of your product doing well is really high. Um, so the money you put into stock you get a return on. So that's incredible. So you've done 150K, three core products and a couple of other products. Um, and how many dead products have you launched? Because this is something I, I, I'm talking about quite a lot recently with people. It's like, you know, sellers think that every single product they launch has to work, but the fact is some products might not work. So how many dead products have you launched and then they just haven't really uh, done what you want? Uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd say seven or eight. Wow seven or eight and are they and that's over two and a half years it's not, not all in really like right. one day right yeah <laughs> so and have they, they have they been big uh, imports have they been small test batches so th this is what's great so one lot was off ebay because it was mm -hmm. i wanted to test the market wow, wow. So that must have been cheap. Cheap. yeah so that was cheap uh, but so what because I knew UK base it was uh, I did my own prepping for it to the, the private label there um, didn't work out because the other players in the market until you try were dominating it and yeah um, another one which is one I touched on earlier um, was a well, I'm gonna, was a uh, pizza stone um, which is heavy, but mm -hmm. using uh, sea freight, you get reasonable rates. Uh, it, was, it was enwrapped in polystyrene and cardboard outer. Um, and it came across by sea very well, but unfortunately, uh, how to put it, Amazon's delivery guys are not so careful. So unfortunately, I had a, a high return rate on it, but the profit margin was there. So what I learned from that was I personally now have an inspector service in China and as part of their inspection services I get them to drop it from six foot. <laughs> That's brilliant yeah inspecting products once you get things moving once you're testing lots of new products inspection service can be it can pay for itself basically that's a great idea man so this is the, the point is you've come from maybe a slower start than you wanted um, with a product in the US not working too well to now things really being moving forward quite fast um, and I just want to explore a little bit about how your life is different now that the business is moving that you've got 150k coming in every year and um, you know you're now a successful seller so how is your life now um, how have things changed fundamentally since you were living in a bed sit and since you felt like you were at a dead end massively I mean that, that it's massive difference so 
I'm not quite to the stage that Amazon is my full-time job. So I still, I have a, another part-time job, but the emphasis is Amazon's my primary job and the other job um, is in project management. But I know at some stage in the next one to two years, I will be full-time Amazon. So it's given me confidence. It's given me freedom. Um, you know, to say to someone, I'm working part time uh, is you know is a real great step forward, and it's um, it's it's a tangibleness. You know, I, my other job is very report based. You know, check out this report and analyze this. Whereas Amazon is, you know, I've found a product, I've personalized that product. You know, the bullet lines come from me. I I put my little spin on it. Talk about you know, our customer services, and you know, you go and talk to your colleagues or your friends. You go. Oh, you do what as well? And, and then it's, you know, another conversation. Yeah, that's the thing. It's fun. I think that's the best thing about the Amazon business. It's actually fun. Like, finding products, deciding how to just make yours a little bit better than the others. It feels like a, like a fun competition. You know, squeezing out as much profit margin as you can, getting the best price from suppliers, um, getting things to sell. I don't know if you find the same thing as me, Mike, but I, I'm addicted to refreshing my sales to see when new sales have come through. I mean, are you the same? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a rush, right? When, when you see the sales come through. That's it. You, if you open my phone, it'll be on it'll be on the Internet Explorer page and it will be on the Amazon app. And I can tell you <laughs> where we are today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I come from an analytical background, so I love looking at PPC. I start, you know, looking at my keywords, what's doing well, what's doing, not doing well, how just to tweak that a little bit. And, and I look at my own processes. Now, you're asking me where I am now and where I'm looking at. So I'm starting to look at um, uh, standard operating procedures. They may be for myself, but I need to make myself more rigid in how I work. So. I'm looking at, okay, at what point should I be restocking into, into my Amazon process? What are my key KPIs that I should be looking at? So it's a repeatable process and you're not, and then you can, as you just said, you can become the purchasing machine. So the, the other tasks that you do just become routine. Mm. The more of those processes you have written down and standardized as well, um, the easier everything becomes, you know, and, um, the more organized you can get with that yeah that's that's incredible so it's so cool that you're thinking about that um no so it's, it's amazing to hear your, your your journey mike so cool to hear that you know things are moving forward um and yeah i mean there's a few things i want to pull apart because i think people will find it really interesting for example um what would be let's say if you i don't know if you may have already done this if you were to have like a standard operating procedure for a test batch and you were thinking of trying a new product uh, in the uk um, what would be the steps that you recommend someone does? You know, let's say they wanted to try their first test batch on Amazon. What what would you recommend they do? Oh, oh, um, <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> so, so I I look at it. At diff I take different ways of looking at the problem. So, for example, I may look at a niche and and say this is possible. And then I will look at the sellers on there. So I'll see if there's a high Chinese contingency, mm -hmm. whether it's a German or European contingency on the niche, niche I'm looking at. Because if I see more European sellers, then I feel that I'm going to be able to compete on a more even ground. Mm -hmm. Because the Chinese have got very cheap margins, right? So you don't want to be battling for price and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So you look at what nationality the sellers are, where they're coming from, um, what what else? What else do you look for? So I'm now looking more towards the branding. So if you're brand registered, you've got the headline adverts at the top of a page. So if that's not being utilized, there's an opportunity to help me launch my product. That's a golden nugget for people, man. Have a look if the, if the headline has been used. So people probably don't know what this is. So when you go and look at a niche, on Amazon, sometimes you'll see a big bar across the top with someone's product on it, right? Um, and if that's not there, that means you can grab that big bar on the top of the niche and you can have your product on the banner. Uh, and if you are the one with that advert, then customers 
will be likely to click on it and buy your thing. So is this how you're getting some of your core products to sell more often? Yeah, so one of my core products, in, there are a number of other sellers with something very similar, and it's about my, my branding. So my packaging is very European. It's um, no colloquialism, but it's wording that people would recognize. Mm. And my headline banner uh, talks about the benefit of that product range. Mm -hmm. So anyone looking in, in that niche will see my banner. They'll talk about the benefits. They've already seen my image, which has similar products to others, but it has uh, packaging on it as well, so it's distinct enough. So anyone then scrolls further down and says, oh, I just saw it at the top, oh, there they are again. Open up, read about the bullets, and go, oh, look, well, it's British values, um, no, um, not no quibble guarantee, but worded in such a way, any problems, we will be there to help you. And very much about that localised, almost like that, shop corner around the corner you, you trust and you understand what they're saying is that's what my branding is about mm, so it's more about um just giving that personal touch so that people don't feel like they're just buying from a warehouse or buying from someone in china who just doesn't care about the customer but they're buying from yeah like you say someone down the road who you might even know their name and they give you good customer service and they care about the products they care if you've had an issue and that's how you separate yourself, right? That's that's incredible. And that's really cool. And the more you can think about that stuff, um, the easier it is to make your product stand out uh, in a niche. Awesome. Okay. So you think about the brand. Um, you have a look in the niche to see if there's a headline banner along the top. Um, um, and, and when you're testing products in the UK, what's an um, interesting question, what's the smallest test batch you've ever ordered? Smallest test batch, 10. 10 units? Oh really, was that the eBay one? Uh, no, it's different. I'm going to ex expand that out by what I mean by 10. It's actually, it was one of your suggestions. So oh I really? I'm take credit for this. <laughs> so I've got one product that um, I'm selling, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a number of other Chinese sellers selling the same product, and it's starting to merge into the background. So I went on eBay and found an associated product and the easiest thing to do is just to scroll down and let Amazon help you and say, what else would this customer buy? And there it was. So I've added that into, the, into that product and then added it as a variation. So I've already got my support, my original reviews mm -hmm. and, and um, use that way to um, clear some of the stock. Wow. Uh, and, was the <laughs> and did it work? Did it sell? Yes, it's it's now given me, I'd say, a 40% increase on that product. So I'm still selling it as a single item, but I also now have it as a bundle item. So the best way I could describe it is they'll go in and see the first item and they have a look at variation and go, actually, you know what, I need that as well. And there's an upsell. That is a genius, genius golden nugget. So guys, if you haven't written that down, I'll be very concerned because this is this is gold, right? So what Mike's done is he's found a product that sells, right? And, and something and he just picked it from one of my PDFs, which I send out all the time, right? If you haven't got one of my PDFs with products on it, send me a message, I can get you one. He picked one of those products and he's used that product and he's bundled it with something that would complement the product. And he's selling the original product and the bundled product together on the same listing so customers think well why don't I just buy the complimentary product and give Mike more money so that's that's a genius way just to bump your profit bump your revenue and also make your product stand out in the niche as well because nobody bundles in the UK so many sellers just don't do this stuff and um, so that's why I always encourage everyone to do it so Mike it's amazing to hear that you've uh, oh it's amazing to hear that you've been using some of the products off the PDFs I'm glad someone's using them right <laughs> that's good to hear um, so um, I think we've covered a lot of ground. Um, it's amazing to have a, a catch up and, and to really um, get some more info on, on your journey. So do you have anything else that you want to tell people at this stage? Maybe they're thinking about starting uh, to build an Amazon business. They're on the fence whether to do it or not. And um, uh, uh, do you have anything to say to them? Um, yes, I think go for it and start as big or as small as you're most comfortable with. Um, there's many opportunities, opportunities I, you could start with an item off eBay, 
So you're focusing on understanding the process rather than being overworked on the profit or you can go larger onto Alibaba and so on. So yeah, and if everyone could get the first product to be the perfect product, then that's fantastic. Um, if I look at my own products, I'd say my fourth or fifth product I launched is probably my best product because I learned from the first four. So yeah. So be in, be in it for the long game. And you know, it's so funny because some, some of my clients do launch their first product and they're doing 10K a month with that one product. Other clients launch their first product and it goes okay, but something goes wrong because they didn't realize or we had a, you know, a mishap. And the key is just to be in it for the long term, not to try and you know, make money in 30 days, but be ready to just keep at it for a while. And the longer you stick with it, um, the, the more experience you get as a business owner, as a seller, as an Amazon seller, and the higher chance it is that you get continued results. Um, in fact, before we wrap things up, Mike, I'd love to ask, um, what uh, impact has this coronavirus had uh, on your business? Have you had um, delays? Have you seen it's, you know, causing like a massive disruption or... Um, you know, what, what I just wanted to just, if you could just let us know um, what, what, what stuff you've been seeing from your end. Okay, so if I wind back about two months when China was in, in shutdown, what happened for, I worked with a sourcing agent, and so what happened with them was um, there was a delay and they were back two weeks later, I got an email, they explained their situation, that they were working from home, and there was a number of their colleagues working from home. So you still be able to, to, you could still go on Alibaba. If you saw a particular product, they were still emailing back, but what they, they couldn't go any further than that. And then another two weeks later, they said, well, we're back at the factories. And because of the new year, Chinese new year, which is usual shutdown, plus four weeks, I'd say factories are probably up to two months behind. So, don't get overly worried if you're trying to make contact with a supplier and they're a little bit slow getting back or they come back quickly and then they tell you it's 40, 50 days before you can get a sample. It's just they're playing with a catcher. Um, sales in the UK, maybe a little bit slower, um, but you know, what what is positive? Because I want to talk about the positive about the situation. Positiveness of the situation is my other job they've turned around and said, you can work from home. And I know a number of places you can work from home. So that means, for me, that's two hours a day less traveling. That's two hours a day I can focus on looking at my Amazon growing. So I'm looking at this period, very weird period, as an opportunity to actually grow faster. Mm, I love that attitude, man. And um, I think that's, that's so true. Like, I think now is the perfect time to really get focused in and start building your business because they are encouraging us to stay indoors more we're not going to be going to so many big events there's not going to be so many distractions as long as you don't have the news on 24 7 right so now is the perfect time to to really get focused and you know we're in the perfect business because um everyone wants to stay at home and just order things to their door so obviously amazon is is the best way to do that so i'm really happy to hear you haven't had too much disruption yes there's a couple of delays yes some suppliers are um, a little bit behind but you're still making sales it's not as if the whole thing's come to a halt so that's incredible all right mike well look today's been so helpful i've really uh, thank you for uh, number one being such a good uh, example of what people can do selling on amazon and number two sharing so many of your secrets today and uh, helping people with all these golden nuggets um, and it's been a it's been really fun uh, having you so yeah thanks a lot man cool okay Awesome. All right, man. Uh, thanks so much. Take care and uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, take care.